Today is the third lecture of the course on Hessians and the left sets properties. Today's lecture is about on higher Hessians and the left sets properties. I recall that in the first lecture, we deal with classical Hessians. In the second lecture, we 13 and Gorenstein algebras. In today's lectures, I'm going to talk about higher Hessians. And see how they are connected with Artin and Gorenstein algebras and how to link with classical Hessians in order to get some kind of a higher order coordinator theory. So, in this lecture, we're going to recall the constructions of higher Hessians introduced by Mayan Watanabe that we use to um, produce Artinian Gorenstein algebras failing the weak left sets property and also the strong left sets property. Moreover, we're going to introduce the so-called mixed Hessians that controls both weak and the strong left sets properties. And these are the main tools that we use to study left sets properties for our team and Gorenstein algebras when the Macaulay dual generator is known or in some way we know some properties of this Macaulay dual generator. In the end of the lecture, we will give you also applications in a geometric problem and an algebraic problem. The algebraic problem was a previous conjecture due to Migliori Nagel that Artinian Gorenstein algebras presented by quadrics should satisfy the weak left sets property. It's not true. And the geometric problem is this kind of comparison with a classical differential objects like Hessians, polar mapping, polar image, a Milner algebra, and the higher order counterpart. And we have some results in the end of the lecture. Let me recall the construction of an AG algebra given by macaulay matlis duality. By macaulay matlis duality, the ideal, the, the, the ideal of the, the are the polynomial ring, Q, the associated ring of differential operators, pure with coefficients over C. Artinian quotient is Artinian Gornstein, if you know if, I is the annihilator of a single polynomial. And if the polynomial has degree D, D is the so-called degree of the AG algebra. The link between Hessians and AG algebras has as a start point minus 
Watanab construction of higher Hessians, Hessians of order K. A has the composition. And let K less than D over two. And I'm going to consider a K linear, a C linear base of Alpha one, alpha S. S, my definition is the Hilbert function, which the dimension, it works. In any field of characteristic zero, but since in this lecture, we are interested in Geometric problems also, I'm gonna focus in the case where the field is the field of the complex numbers. The case order Hessian matrix of F is the S by S matrix given by differentiating F with respect to alpha E, alpha J. It's the same to say, to put alpha E, alpha J of F. Here, we are considering the multiplication in the algebra A. And the Hessian is the determinant of the Hessian matrix. The case order Hessian is the determinant of the case order Hessian matrix. And of course, the Hessian depends on the choice of order bases as C vector space, but since we are interested in the rank of the, the Hessian and more precisely in the vanishing of the determinant of the Hessian matrix, I will go on to omit the dependence on the basics. And since in this presentation, we always can assume Assume I want zero, then the classical Hessian with this notation is precisely the Hess one in the classical Hessian determinant. is this guy. So in fact, it is a generalization of the classical Hessian that we talked about in the first lecture. We will omit the dependence on the basis. A very easy example. Consider the Fermat type quintic. We saw yesterday that. The algebra 
as Hilbert the vector. One, three, 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 one. And in fact, A2 has a standard base x square, y square, z square. So the second Hessian of F, we have to take the derivative of F with respect to x squared, y squared, z squared. So it's going to be 120x yz. Not always is so easy to compute these higher Hessians. And one of the big problems is that the Hilbert function grows like binomials with respect to the co-dimension. And the main result of my N. Watanabe's paper is that the case order Hessian controls the rank of the multiplication map from AK to AD minus K. In other words, the strong left sets property in degree K. From a k to a d minus k, we have to take the power d minus 2k. And it is an isomorphism, more prism, if and only if the Hessian. In the coordinates of L, let me put L this way. It's no zero. In particular, A has the SLP if mm, every um, Hessian is non vanishing. So if there is a point where it's, it's non vanish, uh, there will be an Zadisky open subset where it's non vanishing and we'll take the intersection and it's non empty. Let me recall the proof of my what another main result. Oh, just me recall that since we are working with AG algebras, Artin and Gorenstein algebras, the SLP is equivalent to the SLP in the narrow sense. So it's enough to control the multiplication in symmetric degrees if they are isomorphisms. So this is why, this is the reason why and my new Watanabe's result works to control the SLP. Let us consider 
an identification, identification. the base field, which not necessarily uh, algebraically closed, it's just of zero characteristic. As in all the course, the base field is of zero characteristic. This is the identification I'm gonna choose. So the condition that L T minus two K from AK to A, D minus K is an isomorphism if and only if the um, bilinear map that takes alpha beta and send it to, since it is an isomorphism, L D minus two K alpha beta, L D minus two K alpha beta, evaluated in F is a perfect pairing. Let us try to understand this second condition. This condition is equivalent to say that the matrix of the bilinear map that we take An order of basis for a k. It is equivalent to say that. The determinant of the matrix L D minus two K alpha I alpha J of F is. Non zero. And now I'm gonna use a lemma with some sometimes referred as the differential Euler identity. It's 
Diferente, ó. Euler. Identity. Let G in R, let me say degree E and L AI it's I in A1. Sorry, in Q1. Then L today is a degree, the differential operator acting on a degree E polynomial, it's a constant. This constant is E factorial times G evaluated in the coefficients of L. It's more or less well known. I'm gonna apply to these guys. Let me call Let me call H I G alpha E alpha J of F. They are the entries of Hess K F. They are polynomials of degree D minus K minus K D minus two K. And here we have L D minus two K Alpha I, alpha J of F, which L B minus two K eight I G. But the eight G has degree D minus two K. So it is D minus two K factorial times. D minus two K factorial times eight AG. So the non vanishing of the Hessian of this matrix is equivalent the non vanishing of the sorry here evaluated in the coefficients of l and the result follows it's precisely the result Let me go back to this example. The Fermat example. 
el format type. Let me go back to this example. It's a curve. MP2, and it's not a cone. So by Gordon letter, the first Hessian is non zero. As we see, the second Hessian is non zero. The determinant is y, x, y, z. And the One three 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 one. From here to here, the multiplication map by L to the third power is controlled by the first Hessian. And from here to here, the multiplication map by L is controlled by the second Hessian. And since both Hessians Sorry, it's not a cone. The Hessian is no zero by Gordon Letter's theorem, as I said. Since but are non zero, A has the strong left side property. Hmm. <clears throat> Of course, a form with vanishing Hessian by my annual Watanabe criterion always fails the strong left search property from A1 to AD minus one. So, for instance, we can start with the Un esempio semplicissimo. From Perazzo. To construct an algebra. As usual, the Hilbert vector is one, five, five, one. And there is only one Hessian that controls the RCLP is the first Hessian from degree one to degree D minus one. And since we know that the first Hessian is vanishing, A fails. SLP. But in fact, since we are in the middle from A1 to A2, A fails the double LP. But we are just introducing the, the, the concept of higher order Hessians. So an interesting example could be an example whose first Hessian is not vanishing, but the second Hessian is vanishing. And this example, a first example of this type was constructed by Ikeda. I will go and present a, a simplification of Ikeda's example. A slight modification that does not <clears throat> change the idea.
Operacją. Tak ma? I kiedy? F. Has the shape. In the original example, we have to add this term, but it complicates a little bit the, the Hilbert function. And this one has a smaller Hilbert function, will be easier to compute the second Hessian. As I said, since the Hilbert function grows polynomially with respect to the codimension, it's actually the maximal Hilbert function grows. Uh, the original example has maximal Hilbert function and it, it's complicated. So X is a surface, it's not a cone. The first Hessian is non zero by Gordon Etter theorem. But let me examine the second Hessian. The Hilbert function is one, four, seven, seven, four, one. And in fact, A2 I did this partition, this separation of the variables on purpose to examine F as a degraded polynomial. Day mm. two has four generators of degree one, one, x, u, x, v, y u y v and three of by degree zero two u two u v v two therefore the second Hessian matrix of F has a natural block decomposition. Here, I put the derivatives of type 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 2, 0, 2. 1, 0, 1, 0, it's going to be 0 here. Something, something, something. But this something is 4 by 3 something. And the maximal rank is three. So it must have a, a, a null role. Therefore, the second Hessian is vanishing. The first Hessian controls the multiplication by the third power of a linear form from A1 to AD minus one, in this case four. And the second Hessian controls the strong left set property in the middle. So A fails SLP, but it fails in the middle, therefore it fails double LP.
by definition, SLP implies WLP, strong left sets property implies weak left sets property, which implies the unimodality of the Hilbert vector. As I said yesterday in the second lecture, the converse are not true, both of them. For instance, we can think Ikeda has unimodal Hilbert factor, but it fails double P. Fails double P. In order to construct an example, having the double P, but failing the strong SLP, we take a perazzo, quintic, general enough, something like, like U4, U2, V2, V, V4, since the first Hessian is vanishing, the Hilbert function is one, five, something, something, five, one. Let me try to guess day two. One, two, three, four, seven. If I did it right here, it's controlled by the first Hessian. And since it's zero, it fails SLP here. But here is controlled by the second Hessian. And we can perform the calculation in this example, and it's non vanishing. So it has the well peak. As a corollary of main Watanabe Hessian criterion. On SLP, we know that A has SLP if and only if all the Hessians. This is the is this the criterion. If the degree is less than or equal four, so degree three or four. There is only one Hessian to be controlled. So, so if the circle degree is three, the Hilbert function is one and n one. Here is the first Hessian that controls the left sets properties. So SLP is equivalent to the non-vanishing of the first classical Hessian. In degree four, one in something in one, again, it's enough to check in complementary degrees. So the only possibility to the failure of SLP is controlled by the first Hessian. So again, part two of the corollary, if D is three or four, a has the SLP if and only if the first Hessian is non-vanish. 
Of course, if the degree is low and the number of variables is low, we use Gordon Letter theorem to conclude that A has the SLP. And if the number of variables is high enough, it's possible to construct infinitely many examples failing SLP using Peratsu's construction, per multi construction of Gordon Letter general construction. But, oh no, but in all these cases, we are using the first Hessian to fail the SLP. But if you want to construct examples like Ikeda example, which here the Hessian is not vanishing, but it's vanishing here. So in some way, if you want to choose the point, the degree where the, 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 the strong left size property fails, we have to generalize the construction of Ikeda or gordon utter construction or Perazzo construction. So we introduced the so-called GNP polynomials. GNP stands for gordon utter Perazzo polynomials. In certain sense, the construction mimics the original idea of Perazzo and also the idea of Ikeda. GNP polynomials. We are going to construct a polynomial. A reduced polynomial. X1, Xn, U1, Um of degree D. And this separation of variables is to choose the ni only in the x variables, the mi only in the u variables, and define f to be a summation of ni and mi. And the number of Ni and Mi polynomials is S. And what I say, I say that if S is big enough, then the Hessian is vanished. The, the yeah, sorry, degree K, Degree D minus K 
which there is e, it's, it should be d minus k if s is big enough, big enough is greater than m plus k, m minus one plus k, choose k, then s k of f is vanishing. In particular, the associated AG algebra fails the SLP in degree K as I wanted. What is the idea? The idea, I'm not to give you a full proof, but only the general idea. The details are mm, more or less tricky, but the idea is simple. The AK mm, we're gonna have a partition of pure in X some part with X and U and a pure part in, in U variables. Let me Even better, even better. A part pure and u, and another part containing x and u, perhaps pure in, in, in x. There are lots of things here. And it's the same trick. It's the same trick that if you take only x here, degree k, and here, Differentials involving x and u, not pure and u. Here we got zero in the block, and here we have at most the number of the number of monomials. in degree u, which is m minus one plus k, choose k. And again, this, the number of rows is greater than the number of columns. So the maximum rank is the rank of the columns. And we get zero here. And then assuming that the number f is greater than the, this binomial, we conclude that has k of f is zero. <laughs> Using this and a generalization of Ikeda's original construction, we can prove that except for three and for four, there are 
Um, Horn with vanishing Hessian uh, uh, failing the, the, the SLP in the Greek K for any K up to D over two. The proof if use this construction and Ikeda, a generalization of Ikeda. Let me try to just write down a table and one, two, three, four, five, six, D, two, three, four, five, six, seven. In one variable, there's nothing to do. Uh, in two variables also, the algebra always has the SLP. In degree two, there is nothing to do. In degree three, we know by Gordon Nutter that it has SLP up to five variables, sorry, four variables, we are in P3. Here, it's just to take examples. SLP, Artinian Gorenstein algebras, called dimension N and so called degree D. In degree four, it's the same. It's only the first Hessian that matters. In coordination three, we don't know. It's an open problem. In coordination four, we can use Ikeda. Here is classical. A generalization of Ikeda to prove that it fails. And here we use GSG and P polynomials to prove that there, there exists uh, algebras failing SLP. If N is greater than or equal to five and D also, this is the idea of the proof. And now we are going to move to mixed hashes. The mixed Hessians were introduced by Zappala and I. The idea is that this original construction of Mayeno and Watanab controls the SLP. And we, we are trying to generalize to not understand only the multiplication in complementary degree, but in fact, to understand the rank of any multiplication map in order to, in order to, 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 to control also the double LP.
So we want to understand the idea. It's trying to understand the rank of an arbitrary multiplication map from a k a to a l. So the power l minus k. So at the first glance, it should be nice to define this mixed Hessian. Take a basis for a K, a basis for AL. Naturally, we can define the mixed Hessian of mixed orders L and Q of F. But in fact, it's not the right Hessian that controls the rank of this multiplication map. So we have to, yes, I, I will omit the dependence on the base since I'm only interested in the rank. Uh, So we have to, to construct the so-called dual mixed Hessian matrix. Again, take a, a basis for AK, take a basis for AL, and I'll take the dual base with respect to the perfect pairing given by the multiplication in the algebra. Then we define the mixed Hessians of order BK a basis or AK. BL, beta one, beta T, a base for AL. BL star yeah. is the dual basis. Is a basis for A. B e minus L. In complementary degree. Beta star I of beta J is delta IJ. Times a generator of AD. The result is that not only the rank of the multiplication map, but in fact, the matrix, the matrix of this map with respect to the basis BL and BK is L minus K factorial times the Hessian L dual K evaluated in the coefficients of L.
So I'm going to prove these results. Let me introduce some notation. Proof. I'm going to choose theta, t is theta, the generator of AD such that theta of F is one. And now AD will be generated by this guy, theta. So we got this condition. And I recall the Euler differential identity. If G is a form of degree and L AI XI a linear differential operator, then L to the power of E applied in G is a constant, and this constant is E factorial G evaluated in I in the coefficients of L. Let me call in this matrix. So by definition, L big L, L minus K times alpha j is the sum of b kj beta k k from one to s multiplying by beta I star, it becomes L, L minus K, B I star, A J, it vanishes if K is not I, and it's one time theta, or I, so it's B, I, J, theta. Now, let me evaluate in F, evaluating in F, applying the, the relation in F, beta I star alpha J of F is Bij since theta of F is one. And Bij, sorry, the IJ is 
the entries of the matrix, which I would like to, to prove that are these Hessians. Let us consider G, IJ to be beta I star alpha J of F. The degree of G I J is F D minus K alpha K minus D minus L. So it's L minus K. And here, L is raised to the power L minus K. So beta I star alpha J of F is JJ. So it is L minus K factorial, GIJ evaluated in the coefficients of the linear differential operator L. Therefore, BIJ is L minus K factorial, I star alpha j of f evaluated in the coefficients of the linear form. And that's what I would like to prove. So it proves the theorem. Our remark is that since uh, a uh, since it, it, it this b l star is a basis for a d minus k d minus l and since the rank of the hashem doesn't depend on the choice of the base it's 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 the it's the result corollary since the WP can be controlled in the in the middle, we have these two cases. Sorry, here should be Q, not K. If the degree is odd, there is only one central middle part, and this Hessian controls the WP. And if the, the degree is even, there is one part in the middle that controls the double P. Let me see. In the same way, we use the GNP polynomials to construct uh, um, algebras failing the double P in a certain a specific point, and we have another result in the same in the same in the same way I, we did for SLP, also for double P, and there are only few um, exceptions where we are not where we are not able to construct algorithms failing double P. Let me see how much time do I have? Okay, I have sort of. Four or five minutes. So now we are going to give two applications of these uh, higher order Hessians and mixed order Hessians and try to 
explore some kind of a higher order Gordon Nutter theory. The first application is an algebraic applica application motivated by a conjecture due to Migliori Nagel. The conjecture was that Artinian Gornstein algebras, sorry, Artinian Gornstein algebras presented by quadrics should satisfy the weak left sets properties. The conjecture is not true. And we are going to construct counterexamples. How? Constructing forms that are dual, Macaulay dual generators of algebras presented by quadrics. And in such degraded way, in order to achieve a block decomposition of the Hessian to prove that the, the, the Hessian is some Hessian, some higher ordered Hessian is vanishing. But at first, let me start with cubics. Um, Perazzo did the classification of cubics with vanishing Hessian. In Pn, for n less than or equal six. So the number of variables is at most seven. So the co-dimension, so algebras of so-called degree three and co-dimension at most seven presented by quadrics. Yes, it's true. They have, if A, so-called degree three in co-dimension, less than, at, at most seven, okay. It's okay. They have double P. And why? Because when we can use the classification of Perazzo, we revisit the work of Perazzo and we can use the characterization to compute the annihilator of the forms, of the canonical forms, and see that they are not presented by quadrics. So it's okay, the conjecture is okay in this context. The first very different example of cubic with Venetian Hessian is by coincidence, the first counterexample to the conjecture. And geometrically, it is a tangent section of the second variety of the segregate variety P2 times P2. P2 times P2 in P8. I'm going to consider P8 the projectivization of three by three complex matrices. Then one by three vector, one by three three by one 
one by three. It's a three by three matrix of rank one. It's the SAG embedding. So SAG in pH can be identified with matrix of rank one. This is S. The second variety of S is take the join of S with itself. And if I sum two matrices of rank one, the maximum rank, is two. So it's a de determinantal hypersurface. And it's given by this determinant. These are my coordinates for this projective space. If I take the hyperplane x8 equals zero in P8, it's the tangent of the secant in a certain point. And if I take the tangent section in P7 and call it X, X as equation, X0, X1, X2, X3, X4, X5, X6. X7, zero. In this P7, X8 equals zero. We can perform a change of the names of variables in order to get a very nice combinatoric combinatoric formula or expression for this determinant. And after a change of variables, it's x1, u1, u2. Again, I input it in a degraded form in order to, to understand the vanishing of the Hessian. X2, U2, U3, X3, U3, U4, X4, U4, U1. And then we realized that there is a combinatoric way to see this. That's the way. U1, U2, U3, U4. X1, X2, X3, X4. Now, by looking at the combinatoric, it's easy to see that the derivative of X with respect to X1 is U1, U2, times the derivative of X with respect to X3, which is U3, U4, equals to the derivative of f with respect to x2 times x4. Therefore, the Hessian of f is vanishing. But using Macaulay, you can see that the annihilator ideal of f 
is presented by quadrics. Moreover, the ideal has a very combinatoric shape. The ideal has as minimal generators the square of the ideal generated by x1, x2, x3, x4, because every degree two, sorry, with differential with capital letters, since every degree two differential uh, in x annihilates f, also, this u1 squared, u2 squared, u3 squared, u4 squared, <clears throat> these crossing products are not in the in the annihilator, and they are edges of the graph. But these diagonals belong to the annihilator. They are u1, u3, u2, u4. And also, we get we we have these kind of um, a kind of uh, let me raise here adjacent adjacent relations. Take a look in these vertex. This, this vertex is u1. It is the derivative of f with respect to x1, u2, and also the derivative of f with respect to x4, u4. Therefore, we get this kind of adjacent quadric relations like this one, x1, u2, minus x4, u4. In the non adjacent relations that are of type, type xi, uj, when uj doesn't belong to the edge represented by xi, like x1, u4, x1, U3. This is the ideal. So, in fact, it is presented by quadrants. And since the Hessian is vanishing, it's a first counter example to the conjecture that all quadratic Artinian Gornstein algebras should be presented by. Every uh, AG algebra presented by quality should satisfy the double LP. But analyzing this example and the structure of the Hilbert function using the combinatorics and the structure of the ideal we are able to, in fact, produce examples, not only failing double P, but if the number of variables is big enough, uh, we can construct AG algebras presented by quadrics 
whose Hilbert vector is non-unimodal and in fact is totally non-unimodal with a deep valley. I do not have enough time to enter in the details of the construction. Let me give a single example in degree four. We can see this as a bipartite graph. This is the idea, the combinatoric idea. If I take, let me say, U1, U100, V1, V100, W1, W100, and take all possible UI, Vj, double k monomials, and multiply by x, y, j, k. I can produce f, which x, i, j, k, u, i, v, j, double k. In the same way. We can understand the structure of the minimal generators of the ideal and the annihilator of F is generated by quadrics. And we can, in fact, determine the quadrics. But more than that, The combinatoric of the simplicial complex determines the Hilbert function. Let me say which is the F vector of delta. Delta is this simplicial complex. The empty fat, vertex 100, 100, 100, 300 vertex. Edges, we have 100 times 100, 10,000. But here, here, and here, 30,000. And faces, we have 100 times 100 times 100, a million. By the, by the degrading of this guy, I do not have enough time to explain, but This is the structure of H0K, the Hilbert function be graded zero, zero K, one K minus one, degree zero, one, two, three, four. Therefore, this is the Hilbert function. So it has a, a deep valley. It's not unimodal. Let me see how much time. I still have half an hour. 
And there are other results related with th this construction. But now I'm going to give you a geometric application of the methods. We now are going to construct higher order versions of classical objects like Jacobian ideals, polar maps, and Milner algebras, and try to make some kind of mm, mm, higher order uh, 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 counterpart of classical problems. As usual, let F be a reducer polynomial of degree D. And let A to be the ring of differential operators module, the annihilator, it's not written, but the annihilator of. Oh no. Is the annihilator of F here. The if order Jacobian ideal is take the take derivatives of the Greek A. But you know that if if you take all the derivatives, the ideal generated by all the derivatives is the same ideal ideal generated by the derivatives that actually matters, the ones that doesn't annihilate F. So it's enough to take the action of AK over F instead of the action of all QK. This is the case order Jacobian ideal. There is a natural exact sequence that IK, QK, JK in degree D minus K. So the Hilbert function of the not the Hilbert function, the the dimension of the degree D minus K part of the case order Jacobian is the Hilbert function of A in degree K. And then we can define the case order polar map or also call it the case order gradient map. There is the absolute construction using all the derivatives, but it's enough to take the derivatives that actually matter, the ones that doesn't annihilate the, the form F. It's a natural linear projection. Let me take some chalk. Compiègne. I take the FK, the polar map, using all the derivatives. The linear system is given by QK. It's going to be binomial N plus K, choose K minus one, but we can project using the derivatives that actually matters, the ones, the ones in KK, in AK. Here, the linear system is the AK acting on F. And of course, we can take the image of the polar map, the image of the absolute polar map, and the image of the relative polar map. 
and the projection is from an exterior, exterior point. So the both have the same dimension. And the dimension is the dimension of the Hessian 1k minus 1. In particular, the following conditions are equivalent. PK, the PK is degenerated if and only if the, the, the dimension of the ZK is less than or equal to N. It's the, the definition. It's equivalent to the rank of Hessian 1K is less than N plus 1. And it's the first, it's the first um, comparison result, classical. Higher order in the classical, the polar map. is less than n, if and only if, the Hessian is vanishing. It's Gordon letter criterion. Here, the dimension of ZK is less than n, if and only if, the rank of has 1K, of F is less than N. If the Hessian is, if the first Hessian is non-vanishing, then in fact, it, it this occurs. So, uh, for instance, in the example of Ikeda, since the first Hessian is not vanishing, the second polar map is non degenerate. We we'll say that we we'll say that. Uh, X is case smooth if every point has multiplicity less than or equal K. At most K, not at least K, it's wrong. It was a misprint here. And we know in the classical case that if X is smooth, then the polar map is, is birational, actually. And in the higher order of case, if X is K smooth, then the K is finite. The Milner algebra, the classical Milner algebra, of F is R, quotient by the Jacobian, and the order K, Milner algebra of F is R over the case order Jacobian.
In the classical case, we know that the Milner algebra is Artinian. If and only if x is smooth in the higher order, the Milner algebra of order k is Artinian. If and only if x is k smooth, And now we are just discuss a little bit what we know about these kind of comparison results for Gordon Nutter higher order Gordon Nutter theory. We have defined higher polar map and higher polar image. And we saw that there is an equivalent, not equivalent, but a, a similar result to the degeneracy of the polar map and the higher order polar map. We want to understand geometrically the non-maximality of the rank of mixed Hessians. The only case it's done is this one, 1K. So the question is, what to say about the geometry of X when the Hessian of mixed order AL is not maximal. What to say about the geometry of X? In Gordon Nutter classical theory, it 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 doesn't happen if the code I mentioned, if the, 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 the number of variables is at the most four. So in P3, we know the Gordon Nutter theorem that says that vanishing hash and if and only if it's a cone. So, which is the analogous in the higher order case? The analogous is, is that true or false that SLP holds for AG algebras in codimension three? Let me rephrase the, this question. Let x in P2, a curve of degree D, a reduced polynomial of degree D, and k at most D over 2. Can occur as k of f equals zero. It's it's a very concrete problem, which is asking about the kth order Hessian of a plane curve. We actually have examples 
paleo SLP WLP in high co dimension and degree. We do not have high order Gordon letter identity, which should imply some geometric impact in the geometry of X. And we do not have any kind of classification. At, for instance, let me say the first open case would be classify X with F in P3, the F5. and vanishing Hessian. Type Ikeda. There is no classification, not even in this case. And that is it. This was my third lecture. Tomorrow I'm going to talk about the Jordan types for AG algebras. The main references of this lecture are Mayen Watanabe and these Zapalai and myself from Mixita. Here is the where they introduced. The higher order Hessian, here the mixed Hessian, here is the counterexamples for the conjecture, Miller Nagel conjecture. And here we did this higher order analogous of classical, classical um, objects and results, differential results. That's it. In the fourth lecture, I'm going to talk about Jordan types. Thank you.